Welcome back. While the anti-corruption agenda of President Mahmoud Buhari have brought some down, we however don't know what is happening to the stolen funds recovered. Now, speaking of the funds stolen by former leaders and returned by foreign countries, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Kamalami S.A.N., has stated that the funds will not be returned to the fed federal account. He said this in response to a call by human rights lawyer Femi Falana, who insisted that the recovered loots be paid into the Federation account. And joining me still to discuss this in the studios is legal practitioner Liberos Oshoma. Thank you for staying with us, Liberos. And also political analyst Obideyi Lobinko. Thank you for staying with us. Now, enlighten us on the legal perspective of these two comments. Yeah, um, the um, FF, Femi Falana, yes. uh, SAN, um, did say that uh, by virtue of the investigation conducted by the Abdul Salam led government, uh, it was alleged that $5 billion um, stole from uh, the Feder federal government was funds stole directly from the Fe Fe Federation Federal account, account yes. and that um, it, it, they were proceed taken directly from the CBN. And that once those funds are recovered, by virtue of Section 162 of the Constitution, those funds, all revenues generated, it is presumed or assumed that it is the revenue that's accruable to the federal government and should be paid directly into the Federation account. But Abu Bakr Malemi had argued that um, the refund of those money um, is um, a result of um, you know, a tripartite agreement and collaboration from with uh, you know international bodies, yeah. and that so those agreements that um, they had with those uh, foreign bodies and foreign countries, you know, was a, since there is a conflict that those agreements will supersede. But the argument of Femi Falana also is that look, by virtue of Section 12 of our of our laws of the 1999 Constitution, that those agreements, those international agreements, in as far as they have not been enacted into our laws by the National Assembly, they are still alien to our laws. And even if there is a conflict of laws, that our laws would definitely supersede. And so to that extent, these funds belong to, the funds that belong directly to the federal government and must constitutionally be paid into the federation account. And that's the quagmire. But unfortunately, what we have is that you have a situation where, you know, the Attorney General, who doubles as the Minister for Justice, who is the chief legal officer of the state, also doubles as the, final, as the what do you call it, um, the legal advisor yes, to the federal yes. government. So if you had a situation where you have an attorney general who is elected, who is distant from the office of the minister for justice, who acts as a legal advisor, I think by now the attorney general of the federation ought to have gone to court to sue the government, challenging them to pay that money into the federation account. But because you have both residua in the same person and whose allegiance is more to the president and the government of the federation that appointed him they will pull the wool over anybody's eye using the same law mm. you know to browbeat and hold weak people to the to believe what they want them to believe okay now now i'm, I'm concerned because he also the minister actually did say that the, the revenue mobilization allocation and fiscal commission act has nothing specific on funds recovered from indicted public office holders or assets recovered. <coughs> is, isn't, this, isn't this the reason why there's a loophole? And uh, there's, it, no, there's no loophole. Yeah. Okay. I think mm. from my own perspective, uh, we're talking about funds belonging to the country, Yes, as it were. And um, I, I don't want to see it in a legal way. I just want to see it in a moral way. Uh, like, okay, he took my money. You're collecting that money from him as someone who is defending me. The next thing I believe you should do is you hand back the money to me. Uh, so on that, just on that note, I would have expected that any repatriated funds should go back into the federation's account. And good enough, uh, uh, we have a single uh, a treasury account now, which makes it easier. I mean, this diversification of funds, it's I, I see it as another um, way of politicians trying to play with our funds. Now, now, Shuma, you did say there's no loophole. There's but no loophole. If the minister is alleging that the, the, um, the RMAFC Act doesn't stipulate how recovered funds should be, should be spent, Do, doesn't that create more room for, for this recovered funds for the benefit to, of the, to, be, to be relooted? For the benefit of the yeah. layman, so that we understand. Section 1 says this constitution is supreme. 
and its provisions shall have binding forces on all authorities and persons throughout the Federation of Nigeria. Subsection 3 says, if any other law is inconsistent with the provisions of this constitution, this constitution shall prevail, and that other law shall, to the extent of its inconsistency, be void. Mm -hmm. So, if section 162 of the constitution says, all monies accruable to the federal government shall be paid into the federation account. Yes. And the Revenue Mobilization and Physical Commission Act is silent on funds recovered from foreign bodies, yes. looted funds recovered from, from foreign bodies. Why do you need to look at the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission when there is already a provision in the Constitution that covers the feed? Mm -hmm. and, and so, it is when there is no provision in the Constitution, and then you now begin to look at the provisions in the Revenue and Mobilization Commission, they say, oh, there is a lacuna here. The Constitution did not make provision for this. The law specifically that talks about, you know, mobilization of funds and how it can be shared yes. also did not make provisions of this. The ground norm, which is the constitution, has made provision for it. And so I don't see why anybody should be looking at any other law. What basically is happening here, like I said, is the fact that you have a situation where a minister for justice doubles as Anthony General. So he's looking for, he's fishing for laws to see how he can protect and defend their act. Yes, fine, all right, quite all right. The money still belongs to the federal government. Yes. And so if it is in the Federation account, other states will insist that they will have a share of it because it is money that is accrued to the Federation. But if it is with the federal government in a separate account, they can use it the way they want to use it. They can tell you that it is for empower or to share to trade that money, that that was the arrangement that they had with the, the, the government uh, or that they want to use it to build roads. Mm. How this money is utilized also, we cannot be monitored by other state government because it is within entirely within the purview of the federal government, you know. And so that is why you see the the attorney general, you know, pulling woos and uh, citing laws that are non-existent to defend an action that is, is indefensible. Okay. Now, Obide, interestingly, Malami stated that the, the users of the recovered loot are subject to international agreements between Nigeria and the affected countries. However, he didn't say what specifically they will be used for. Now, do you see foul play at, at, at work here? Because if not, why are Nigerians not being educated on what this, this funds will be used for? Like um, Barrister rightly said, he, he read it from the uh, Constitution. Constitution, uh, yes. And um, it was stated there that any law, any, am I right? Yeah. Any law that is inconsistent with what we have on the ground should be put aside and our laws should be followed. So I, I still see it as anky panky being played here. It's just, um, it's, there's, there's no, I don't think there's any moral justification uh, for this. It's just still boils down to there's a selfish interest that needs to be fed some, some, somewhere. Uh, quickly also, yeah. section 12 subsection one says, no treaty between the Federation and any other country shall have the force of law, except to the extent to which any such treaty has been enacted into law by a National Assembly. And so, if you have an arrangement, an agreement, a treaty, or whatever name so-called, yes. with you know, a foreign government, well, it, as long as that treaty had not been enacted into law by our uh, the National Assembly, that treaty is still alien and should be subservient to our laws. And even if that treaty is enacted into a law and it is con conflicting with the provisions of our constitution, by virtue of section one, subsection three, that conflict to the extent of the consistency yes. shall be declared null and Okay, can, can citizens take legal action in, in, in the case the government refused to state categorically what this looted fund, recover looted funds will be used for? Yes, yes. and no. Okay. One, we had, I had had cause to public, pu pursue public interest matters like this. The first hurdle to cross would be the issue of uh, local standing. What is your, how has your rights on this matter been being affected infringed. by that, you know, it, it been so affected that it supersedes the right of, you know, the other 150 million Nigerians. Once you cross that hurdle, then the government cannot begin to look at it. So that had been a quite big question that, you know, make people shy away, citizens shy away from pu pursuing public interest matters such, such as this. I think the only best thing for government to do is to ensure that our laws are obeyed and not obeying breach, 
And then we also will not fold our hands, you know, hiding under the fact that, uh, you know, um, the, our, our uh, locus um, to, to challenge such actions will be questioned. Okay. No matter how bad it is, maybe someday, our, if we continue to push like this, our laws will be amended, okay. you know, to give us that power, that unfettered right, power. Quickly, we're out of time. In, in conclusion, in your views, in 30 seconds, if you can, how do you think the fight of President Mahmoud Buhari administration against corruption has been so far in the light of all what is unveiling and happening? Obide, I'll start with you. Be, be, before now, I, I was 100% with the president, but I can tell you that um, right now with happenings and everything happening, I think um, my, my scorecard is getting low on him. Liberal Sushuma. I never believed that uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, you know, had the, you know, the courage to, to do what he promised that he was going to do, even during the election. Though I believed uh, at that time that Gulag Jonathan didn't have it, uh, also I believed that neither Muhammad Buhari had it because I looked at his record from 1984 when he left office up till he started running for office. I've never seen where he delivered a lecture on how to combat corruption. I never saw where he delivered a lecture on how to build an economy. And, and so for me, I know, the politi I know how politicians can build a facade around you and sell it. And so it was just all a facade. That's why you find out what you're finding now that um, what we are basically doing is finding ways to recover money and not fighting corruption. Legal practitioner, Liberal Zashuma, thank you for joining us on Plus Pleasure. Politics and for your contribution. And also political analyst, Obideyi Lobinko, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Thank you. For thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report. And when we return, I'll give you my take. Stay President Mohamed Buhari has written to the Senate seeking an amendment to the Finance Act recently passed by the National Assembly. The President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, read President Buhari's letter during Tuesday's plenary seeking the lawmaker's endorsement. This bill seeks to amend the Finance Act 2019 as recently passed by the National Assembly by clarifying, one, that the administrative effective date for the increase in value-added tax from 5% to 7.5% is the 1st of February 2020. Two, that animal feeds in court are included in the list of basic food items that are exempt from value-added tax. And three, aspects of the tax holiday incentive for agriculture by targeting this incentive to small and medium-sized companies that invest in primary crop, livestock, forestry, and fishing agricultural production. This incentive is also to be administered by Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission pursuant to the Industrial Development Income Tax Relief Act. While I trust that this bill will be favorably considered for passage into law by the National Assembly so as to support the implementation of the 2020 federal budget, please accept the Sungwi Senate President the assurances of my highest consideration. You are sincerely, Muhammad Ubahari. And here is my take. On the detriment of Sanusi, what puzzles me is the most it's all of this is the odious silence of the northern elites. A lack of good judgment of the highest order is best words to describe the ongoing silence of northern emirs, the ulamas, the elites, and, and leaders of thought as Governor Ganduje similarly destroying a critical traditional heritage of northern Nigeria on a vindictive mission. Thus, the traditional institution which has given the North semblance of cohesion, unity, and mystic is being torn apart at the whims and caprices of political criminals imposed upon us by people of do-or-die attitude, electoral maleficence. Now, today it is Sanusi Lamido. Tomorrow it will be another person who will be turned into a political rag and a house board by political neophytes who seize the reins of governance through undemocratic electoral backdoors. I call upon President Buhari, Chief of Staff Abakiari, and Chief of Cousins Mama Daura to urgently intervene in this ill-omened misadventure. His Royal Highness Sultan Sahad Abubakar and other emirs and leaders should intervene in this Kano Emirate crisis. The deposition of Emir Senussi is a dangerous precedent, and nothing in silence over the matter spells trouble for the North. 
I also urge the federal government to tell us what our monies have been used for. The stolen loot being discovered in foreign countries are the monies our parents and grandparents work for. They were stolen and have now been returned. Nigerians have a right to know what they are being used for. Every penny of the billions of Naira don't steal from us a second time. Remember, you won't always be in power and be careful what you do today. And that's all for the show tonight. Thank you for staying with us. We'll be back tomorrow, same time. Till then, be well.